a temptation. And Sadaqa Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, it has come to pass. Digital technology, where they can take images now, and they can put words in the mouth of a person that he didn't even say. They could take my picture, and they could put words in my mouth that I didn't say, put it on a disc and send it to Al Jazeera or something like this, and accuse me of something that I didn't even do. Our parents have never seen anything like this before. And we can even say those of us who are, who are over 30 years old or 40 years old, when we were growing up, we, we didn't even have these things. So it's even one generation, it's not even five generations, it's one generation that this technology has changed. And they say it is changing so rapidly that by the month, it is changing now. And so this is a new period of time. They will come to us with a type of speech that none of us have ever heard of before. Beware of them that they take you off the path. And beware that they put you into a trial, into a temptation, into a fitna. And so this requires on our part a high amount of intelligence. This requires on our part to be able to go back to our sources, to bring us to the straight path, and to keep us out of the path of evil. Because evil today has become a business. And in many cases, the new uh, stars, the new idols that are coming out of the movies, many of them now are gangsters and bandits, criminals, are the heroes for many of the younger generations. Evil has been made to seem like an enjoyable thing. And a person who wants to tell the truth, who wants to live modestly, who wants to judge people not based on their color, who wants to, 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 to live without interest and usury, that person feels strange. That person feels like they are an outsider in the world. And so it is crucial for us to make a connection with those things that are actually happening around us. And it requires for us to have a high amount of intelligence. In order to get this satisfaction in this world, and in the hereafter, we need to have intelligence. The Prophet ﷺ gave us direction in this. And he told us in an authentic hadith, al kayis mandana nafsa wa amila lima ba'd al mawt وَالْأَحْمَقْ مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَا وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْأَمَانِ The Prophet ﷺ said, al kayis the intelligent person, is the one who controls himself. He controls himself. And he works for the next life. And the ahmaq, the fool, the idiot, is the one who lets himself go, does anything in this world, and then he hopes Allah will forgive him in the end. And so they give the shirts for the younger generation and the night air shirts and you turn the back and it says, just do it. Just do it. What does that mean? Just do it. Do anything. This is the ahmaq. He lets himself his hawa go. He does anything and then at the end he thinks, I will make istighfar or that God will forgive me. I am a good person. And he lets himself go. This has been described by the Prophet ﷺ as a fool. al kayis mandana nafsa wa amila lima ba'd al The intelligent person is the one who controls himself in this world. He controls his desires. Because look at the life of this world. How long do we actually live in this world? How many years? The Prophet ﷺ basically said, 63 years old, he lived, and he said, in the 60s, this is basically the lifespan of the Muslims in this ummah. If you live over 63, you're on borrowed time. This is the lifespan of this ummah. But let's give the person 100 years. Let's say that our man, uh, Zaid, he lived to be 100 years old. Measure the life of this world to the hereafter. And those who are studying math can try to do the math for me. You have 100 here, 
And then in the hereafter you have eternal life. 100 years and eternal life. Measure the two. Divide eternal life by 100 years. What is your answer? Zero. وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُوَةِ The life of this world is nothing but deception. It is a deception. And if the person lived to be 60 years old, how much time did he actually have in this life? Most of us, if we sleep 8 hours per night, okay, that's the average, there's 24 hours in the day, that means one third of your day you are sleeping. If you take it to your life, if you live to be 60 years old, that means 20 years you are sleeping. Think about that. You better invest in a good bed. 20 years of your life, you're sleeping. Only 40 years you're awake. This is mata al ghurur This is a deception. It's an illusion. So al kayis the intelligent person, is the one who worked for the next life. He controls himself in this world. He provides for himself. She lives her life out, educates herself. But she realizes there is another life. Because when Allah describes the next world, He speaks about it saying, خَالِدِينَ fiha abadan." They will live in the next world forever. Forever. That is the intelligent person. So that person will put something away toward the next life. But the life of this world today, the evil one in control of much of the uh, facilities now coming at us, and I say this not that I am against television or the movies, it's a machine. But what is happening to it? It has been shown that in uh, San Francisco, a group of people uh, whose, whose leader was called Antoine Levy, in the 60s, they formed the Church of Satan. And they uh, dedicated themselves to the worship of the devil. And they made certain movies. They made uh, movies, um, Rosemary's Baby. And they made uh, a, a series of movies where evil became um, stronger than good. And they say that one of their greatest achievements was to make the evil one appear like he did not exist. Or that if he did exist, he's not a bad guy. He's just a little confused angel. He's a fallen angel and he's got a problem. Okay? This is their greatest achievement. But the reality is for Muslims, in order to be able to have the direction in this world, to make it through the life of this world, is like a minefield. It's like bombs going off all around us. How do we make it through this world? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 168 and 169. Telling us, giving us direction as to what is going on around us. What are some of the themes and issues happening? And Allah tells us, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim." Ya yuha nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba, wa la tatabiyu khutuwat ash-shaytan. Inna hu lakum aduun mubin. Inna ma yamurukum bissu'i wal fahsha, wa an taqulu ala Allahi ma la taalamu. Allah said, "O oh mankind, humanity, speaking to all people, Muslims and non-Muslims, eat." of that which is lawful and wholesome from the earth and do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan for he is to you an open enemy he is an open enemy verily he commands you only with what is evil and sinful and to say against Allah that which you know not and so the shaitan comes with three things he comes and he commands us with su' wal fahsha. With evil things, 
right? The bank robbers, the murderers, the gamblers, right? These are the heroes now. They make it seem beautiful and easy. And immorality, fornication, and adultery made to seem like a normal thing that a human being is doing. Stealing and lying, cheating on his wife. It's a normal thing. Well, he's just a, he's just a man. It becomes an easy thing for people to do. So, evil and immorality. And third, you say about Allah that which you know not. And so people will try to say, they will tell you what God is saying. They will tell you uh, uh, things that even amongst us, even in the, in the, the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam, it has arisen people who will say things about Allah which Allah did not say about Himself. They will say things about the Prophet Wasallam which the Prophet Wasallam never said. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, مَنْ كَذِبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّعُ مَقْعَدُهُ مِنَ النَّارِ that whoever lies on me openly and he knows it will have a place in the fire waiting for him. And so, this world and the commands that are being given to us. How do we make it through this world? How do you make it through the minefield? We first have to know what is going on around us. To know what are the traps that are out there. One of the great scholars are Imam Dawal al-Hijrah, Imam Malik ibn Anas radiallahu anh, when he spoke about sin, because remember the verse is saying that the shaitan commands you with evil, with sins, and with immorality, and to say about Allah that which you know not. So what are some of the major sins? What should we look for? in order to make it through this world so that we will be satisfied, contented in this life and moving toward the hereafter. How can, what can we know? The Imam Rahimahullah, he said, Awwal al-ma'asi al-kibba wal-hasad wal-shuh Hasada iblis wa takabba faqala khalaqtani min naran wa khalaqtahu min teen faqala ta'ala faqula min haythu shi'tuma وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ شَجَرَةً فَشَحَّ آدَمْ حَتَّى أَكَلَ مِنْهَا Imam Malik Rahimahullah He said that the first major sins What were the first major sins that human beings were involved in? He said Pride Al-Kibba Hasad Jealousy And Shuh Greed Think of these three things. Pride, jealousy, and greed. And think about the world today. Think about the capitalist system. Think about the inequality that is going on inside of the world. These are the first major sins. And still up until today, these are some of the greatest obstacles in front of us in gaining success in this life and the hereafter. So the Imam said, Rahimahullah, in explaining this, he said, Hasada Iblis, Iblis, he was <coughs> jealous of Adam. What a kabbar. He became proud. And he said to Allah, You created me from fire, and you created Adam from clay. So these are the first two. And then Allah said to Adam and his wife, The two of you eat from wherever you want, but do not approach the tree. Do not approach the tree and then they got greedy. Their desires came in and they ate from it. So these are the first three. Think about that. The evil one, the shaitan, he was uh, jealous of Adam alayhi salam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the name of everything. He gave Adam a special position. And he told uh, the angels, Ustuju li Adam, fasajadu illa Iblis. He said, bow down to Adam. And the angels all bowed down. Iblis refused. And when he was asked why, he said, no, I'm made from fire. And he's made from clay. Why should I bow down? So you could say Iblis was the first racist. He was the first racist on earth. Why was he a racist? Because he refused to accept Adam. He's a fire man. 